Um, in this series, uh, this meeting is being live. Okay. We started a series, and then the series we called it. Somebody, can somebody remember what the series is called? Anybody? Uh, somebody going to tell me what this series is. Okay. You want me to say something? Yes, go ahead. I, go ahead, uh, Alexandra. No, no, I'm not sure um, about when you were saying that anybody wanted to testify or anything like that. Uh, I wasn't sure you were talking about me or somebody else because I've seen it. It was saying that you to unmute or something like that. Yeah, did you want to say something? You want to share a testimony? Um, I mean, the only thing I can say is God is good. <laughs> God is good regardless of uh, whatever, anything that we definitely face on our daily basis um, as far as just stuff that our issues or certain stuff that we try to blame god for um in our life and stuff like that when we're not consistent with things that he basically show us um in ourselves um and what i'm i'm in awe of god is that things that the practical things that we see or things that that we deal with we can use that even in our spiritual life um to really show us okay you may um you, you prioritize certain things but when it comes to spiritual stuff you know, you're lacking in it in the same way that you could be able to um, be diligent in trying to figure out how you could resolve an issue physically, spiritually, and you need to do the same thing, um, basically. So for me, I'm, I'm just fine. I, I am in awe of God because of how diligent he is in showing us ways to, to resolve certain things, even when it comes to love, right? So showing us different fruits of the spirit to apply to see exactly what we're missing, um, and even in in um in regards of say I'm um, just health issues right I'm trying to find okay why am I having abdominal pain why I'm having this pain and you may you know try to okay I may need to go to this doctor that doctor even I, I'm looking at it even also in the fruits of the spirit right you may be lacking in this kind of this fruits of the spirit and that's because of you're not applying this fruits of the spirit um whether it, it is love or being long suffering or patient whatever it is because you're not um because you're lacking in that area this is why you're dealing with the problem that you're dealing with because you're not applying this fruit of the spirit kind of thing so i'm just i don't know why but i'm just i'm just a oh god because i think for us we kind of have to wake up when it comes to certain stuff that we're dealing with on a daily basis because we're not being diligent in treating those areas um on a more broader scale of what god is telling us to do so that's mm -hmm. i guess that's all i wanted to share Okay, well, moment of God, thank you for, I want to thank you for uh, sharing what you share, because I think it has a lot, I thank all Kimmy and them, but uh, also uh, uh, Kimmy and um, letting us know that we're in, um, talking about the IN, and when I think about the IN, think about what Alexandra just said, is that, you know, what, what are we committed to being in, you know what I'm saying, in other words, if I'm committed to being in Christ, what what I am committed of, to being in, it um uh, it is the it is the resolve to everything that may be coming at me. It is the solution to everything that might be coming about me. What I'm just and that's why I really believe that it, and we're going to go in Ephesians and I want us to man I want y'all to get active. I want Joseph to get active. I want Barbara to get active. Women. I want I want Jessica to get active. I, I want us to. I hope we've been reading. I'm gonna tell you something. I've been listening and reading Ephesians, and I mean, it's so much. It is like when I understand why God called it, why He said this series is gonna be called the end. You know, I end. You know, we we started out the series saying faithfulness is in Christ Jesus. But as I began to read every one of the books and just go over it, I started seeing why what God was talking about. Why it's so important to understand what you are in, what, what, you know, you build something and you go in it, you know, what are we in? And I believe God is really giving his church through this study. He's going to really give his church an understanding of what he's doing and what we are required to be in, to be able to have victory in variety of areas of our life. I believe that God is really going to open up revelation knowledge to each and every one of us, to those who are uh, chiming in to give us understanding. It is what you are in that is going to give you victory or protection or, 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 or um, what the things that you need for this season in this time that we're in. So uh, we started, um, I, I kind of want, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of want a reader tonight. Um, 
someone who's going to, since we're going to probably read a little bit tonight, uh, 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 if you desire to be a reader tonight, just slip a thumb up. Lift a thumb up in the air and wave it around like you just don't care. Okay. Nobody's lifting your thumb in the air. So I guess I have to choose someone. Adina, you want to Adina, you want to read tonight? Maybe somebody. Might. Yes, I could read for you, sure. Hey. And I told if it, it, it was possible, some of y'all gonna need to turn them cameras on too. Stop playing. Okay, if you can. Go ahead, Adina. We're gonna start reading at, we're gonna start back at verse 10, and then we're going to go down. Because I, I and please, I'm telling you all, please let your God, please let people's spiritual ears be open as we go through chapter one, chapter two, chapter three. Please let people's spiritual ears be open so we can hear through your apostles, so we can hear through the letters of your apostles writing to your churches and writing what. They understood what you were doing, what they needed to be in, and what was going on, what what in what season they were in, and what need, what was going on in that season. Let people let let the ears be open because we are a continuation of that season. Go ahead. We're gonna start at verse ten. Um. Okay. Where? I'm sorry. The book. Of Ephesians. Oh, Ephesians. Chapter ten. Okay. Verse one. We're gonna start at verse ten because we were already we already read to verse ten. We're gonna um we start we actually read verse ten, but we're gonna read it over again the deep one. And I want okay. you to make sure you write down on your study notebook. Make sure you're writing down in I in knowing what we're in. Um and, and man, I don't know this thing. It's just like you keep getting stuck in my spirit knowing what you're in. When 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 a storm is coming, it's important to know what you are in. When uh, when the, when trouble comes, it is important to know what you are in. When um, um <laughs> when somebody look when somebody when somebody going crazy, it's important to know what you are in. Amen. When your finances come on, when you start talking about investing your money, it's in or putting you in, it's important to know what you are in. Because what you are in can affect your whole life. Go ahead, um, verse 10. Okay, with all wisdom and understanding, he made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in Christ to be put into effect when the time reaches their fulfillment, to bring unity to all things in heaven and on earth under Christ. That, okay, that. And he said that in the dispensation of the fullness of time, he might gather together in one all things in Christ. All things going to be gathered in who? Christ. I want everybody to say that. All things will be. So if all things are being gathered um, and, and, they're, and they're being gathered in Christ, we need to know. Um, so everything that God is doing, he's gathering everything in who? Christ. Christ. Okay, keep going. In him, in him, we were also chosen, having been predestined according to the plan of him who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of his will, in order that we who were the first to put our hope in Christ might be for the praise of his glory. So let's look at that. In him. Also, we have obtained an inheritance being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his will. This it is God's will that he's gathering everything into Christ. Christ is the means where everything is coming together. Go ahead. Verse 12. Verse 12. In order that we who were the first to put our hope in Christ might be for the praise of his glory. And you also were included in Christ when you heard the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation. When so, you believe- Hold up, hold up, I wanna say this. How many of y'all are noticing that when we hear the gospel of our salvation, it is taking us in who? Christ. Yeah. So anybody ever wonder why how people hear the gospel of salvation and it took them into being a Baptist? 
It took them to being in a Pentecostal, how it took them into being into so many religious organizations and affiliations. But the Bible, but when we look at Paul, he's saying that when we, I like he says, I want to read it right. He says, in, in whom ye you also trusted after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed, and ye were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. So it is, it is that we hear the word and that we hear the word that takes us into Christ. And when we are taken into Christ, we are sealed by the Holy Ghost. We are sealed, oh my God, you are sealed by the spirit that comes to guide us in all truth. What truth? The truth of the life, the death, the resurrection, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The promise, the promise. The Bible say Abraham say what I love about it, he said, Abraham, in thy seed shall all nations be blessed. What seed? That seed is in Christ. So the gospel is leading you to come into Christ. And when we come into Christ, the word of Christ is being sealed in us by the Holy Ghost, who comes to bring all things into remembrance of Jesus Christ and to guide us in all truth. To understand our salvation came, salvation comes with being in Christ. Your salvation came from being in Christ. Your salvation didn't come in what church you joined. Your salvation didn't come um, who your pastor is. Your salvation came from what the church you went to and what that pastor was preaching because that pastor was preaching not himself, but Christ Jesus in himself a servant. So he was preaching Christ, but why? Because the word tells us that all things are gathered unto Christ and sealed by the Holy Ghost. The promise. Are, 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 are we getting this? See, we, we, we got to find out where the safety at. Well, where is the gospel taking me? Where is the gospel taking me? Because wherever the gospel is taking me, it's going to produce in me. What, wherever it's taking me, it's going to produce in me where it's taking me. And I'm going to begin to manifest what is what, 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 where it's taking me. Okay. Let, let's read some more. Let's read some more. Go ahead. When you believed, you were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit, who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession to the praise of his glory. So if we don't have this Holy Spirit, we're not his. For it's the Holy Spirit is the seal that, re that, 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 that uh, reveals to us that we, are his, that, that we are his children. You know, it's like, Having, you know, I, 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 man, I'm going to tell you something, just, just pondering on the things that God's been teaching lately, even to revival. The Bible says in the revival that the Holy Spirit, that, that the angel came unto Mary. I heard me say this. The angel came unto Mary said, Mary, thou art highly favored. And Mary, and Mary was in position to conceive. And the Bible says that the Holy Ghost overshadowed her. And this is the part that's so awesome. The Holy Ghost overshadowed her. And when it overshadowed her, it birthed in, and they said that holy thing in you, Emmanuel, it birthed in her God with her. Amen. So that same Holy Spirit that overshadowed her, that birthed in her Christ, meaning Emmanuel, God being with her. When the Holy Spirit, oh my God, when it overshadows you and is birthing, is birthing in you, that same seed, my God, that same word is birthing in you, Christ in you. That holy thing in you. That's why you and I can say, greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Why? Because what's in you is that seed, that Emmanuel, letting people know that God is with you. See, what's in you is producing, let people know that God is with you. Is there anybody rejoicing because you have received the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit is as, as you cry in our Abba, letting you know God is with me. Mm. God is in me. Go, go ahead. For this reason, ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all God's people, I have not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. Now, I want somebody to speak on that. So anybody want to speak on that? Listen to what he just said. And it's something so powerful. And he's talking about, first he's talking about everyone in Christ. Then he's talking about being sealed in Christ by the Holy Spirit. And then he says something so interesting when we're talking about being sealed in Christ in the Holy Spirit. He said, which is an earnest of, uh, uh, read that last part again. Chapter, we still for, one. Oh, 
sorry. No, no, For this reason, ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all of God's people, I have not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. So, so I'm not going I want somebody tell somebody tell me what do you get out of that? What do you grab out of that? Anyone just lift it. Come on, we got to get involved. No, someone listen, give me a put a thumbs up or something and put your a hand up or let me know what did you get out of that? Nobody ain't gonna share. Well, you know, I'm gonna call, I'm gonna start calling on y'all. Y'all know y'all, I can always, I'm gonna start calling on some people. I, I, this is, okay, go ahead, rooted in Christ. Good afternoon. Um, yeah, good afternoon. My take from it, I mean, for me, I've been studying like, you know, the letters of Paul, like Colossians and Romans. And um, what I've noticed about Paul is he always mentions how thankful he is for um, the saints and um, for the, you know, for their labors and how he's constantly praying for them. And um, my take on it is that as believers, as brothers and sisters, we should never neglect one another, but we should always, you know, ask God, you know, to continue to bless our brothers and sisters with more spiritual understanding and more wisdom. And, you know, like the scripture says, like, you know, always thanking God for them because um, our apostles, um, the prophets, every servant of God um, are constantly sowing. We, our leaders are constantly sowing into us. So I think um, it would be dishonorable for us as believers who um, watch them labor um, for God and not to just, be, you know, be in a position to sow um, into them, even if it's as small as a prayer, you know, of thanking God and asking God to give them strength to continue to endure um, whatever assignment God has placed on them. So that's my take on it. Okay, thank you, uh, rooted in Christ. Go ahead, Adina. I, 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 I love what I love what she said. I, um, go ahead, Adina. I want y'all to talk. I, I want us to think about this. I don't. Want, well, I'm, I'm, we got. We have to get engaged. We have to get active in in, in participating and sitting down and breaking bread. Go ahead, Adina. So on Sunday, um, we were reading in the book of James. So I finished reading the book. And in there, James talks about how Abraham was counted righteous because of his faith in the Lord. But his faith in the Lord didn't come without works. It came from putting Isaac on the altar and um, being able to sacrifice him, doing what the Lord told him to. So for Paul to say, ever since I heard about your faith, I believe that he must have heard about something they're doing, some way they're acting for them to be showing out this faith. Um, and that's what I think of when I, when I read this. And anyone else? Inuka, I'm about to mess, I'm about to mess with somebody. Inuka, Inuka, what you get out of it? Maybe she's not active. Let me tell you, I want to say this. This is what I want to say what, what, what stuck out of what stuck out to me and what they're saying. And I want y'all to see the correlation. Here's the correlation. He says, Wherefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord and love unto all the saints. His when he, he heard about their faith in the Lord, but there was a manifestation of love toward all the saints, the children of God. So there's something about when people hear about your faith, that it should testify about your love. Your faith in Jesus Christ should testify about your love for your brother. See, we think faith in Jesus Christ is sitting there believing for cars and houses, and that's all good too. But what about the faith? What about, he said, let me read again. Wherefore, I also, after I heard of your faith, faith come by what? Hearing, hearing the word of God. After I heard about your faith, where? In the Lord Jesus, in our Lord Jesus Christ. I heard about you having faith in the word and what? And love unto all the saints. In other words, I heard, in other words, I heard about your faith in the word of God, in Jesus. 
But that in your faith in Jesus, it's being manifest, it's being what? Shown in the love for all the saints. So it's kind of like I'm hearing about you talking about you got the word that you believe in Jesus. But if you believe in Jesus, is it not manifested in your love toward the brother? Because when I think about sin, sin played out and murdering toward the brethren. If we go back to when sin was, uh, when sin began to be birthed in Cain, I mean, and, and Adam and Eve, Adam and Eve, the first thing Adam said when it came to sin is, when sin came into play, they saw each other. Adam said, Lord, it's the woman you gave me. They started blaming, hiding, be, blaming, hiding, being ashamed. When, it, when they birthed children who, who operated in sin, when sin was operating, Cain said, am I my brother's keeper? So it seems like sin always affects people around us in a very negative way. Sin can affect, if we look at the pain and hurt and brokenness of sin, it is being played out through lives and interaction and relationships. Would you all agree? And somehow we have taken sin or, or, or even the righteousness of God and want to play it out in the things that we obtain. We want to play it out that, you know, God is with me because, you know what, I believe God for this house, or I believe God for this car, or I believe God for this, or I believe God for that. And in sin, we want to talk, talk about sin as in sexual, even sexual immorality sin, or sin, you know, covenants, but sin looks like when it is played out, when it is manifested, it is damaging people. Just like righteousness, when it's played out, it is blessing people. So faith in Christ is manifested in a love toward the saints. And in that love, there is self-control, there is the fruit of the spirit, there is the, but, but remember now, we're in Christ, but if I'm really in Christ, it should be manifested in a love toward the brethren. What do y'all think? I don't know, I just got that out. And in that, he says, I think, he says, I cease not to, says, I cease not to give thanks for you, making mention in you all my prayers. Why? Because of how you loving people, how you how you in Christ, but in your but you being in Christ is being manifested. And, and I mean, you know, if you in Christ and it's being manifested, we're not lying to one another. If we are in Christ and it's being manifested, we're not deceiving one another. If we are in Christ in the Word, we're not slandering or devouring one another. That action comes from us being in Christ. Remember I told you, whatever you in, is going to start manifesting outwardly. So if you and I are in Christ, then he's telling us that there's a love unto the saints. But sometimes we don't got people don't put this little falsehood in where well, they're saying, well, if I'm in Christ, that means I, and I think the things that we kind of measure other than this right here, what the, what the word is, just how the word is measuring it, the other way that we kind of, the kind of way is people are trying to measure it, the world says, I can measure me having your same God that same way. Like, let's say, I'm going to say, well, I'm in Christ. And because I'm in Christ, I'm going to have a lot of stuff given to me. I'm going to be blessed with a lot of financial wealth. And other. Well, I guess the world can turn around and say, well, me, you're, if you're saying that you're blessed with a lot of stuff, and that's what your God do, then I guess I can claim your God because I got a whole lot of stuff too. What do y'all think? The way the woman of God, the way, watch this, let me break it down. We're going to learn, we're going to learn, God going to give us this and break it down because I don't know if you've already Ephesians, but God is kind of setting something a foundational because he can go later on and talk about how a husband should treat his wife and how a wife should treat his uh, husband. He's going to go a little farther talking, and you keep going at these, he's going to talk about um, how children ought to act with their parents and how parents ought to act with their children. He's going to go a little farther and start talking about um, how servants ought to act. And he's going to go a little farther talking about how the body fitly joined together. When you read Ephesians, you're going to see being in Christ manifests what God is building and what God building, there's a certain behavior in which it operates in that is different from the world. And that operation at the end is not a measurement on what I possess, but a measurement on what who possesses me. 
Mm. Oh, we gonna, we gonna see. What, what y'all think? Anybody got a comment? I'm trying to love my friend in Christ. I'm trying to love my enemy, but I can't do it unless I'm in Christ. I'm trying to love my sister without sex in, her in the church, but I can't do it for my brother unless I'm in Christ. I mean, get what I'm saying? It, 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 there's, there's, a, there's an operate, there's, a, there's, a, there's a way that I'm called to function in him. Mm. Okay, let's, let's read a little bit more. Okay, verse 17. I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. And you know, we praying, we got to pray for this. And we got to pray, God, give us, I love, he says, and that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you spirit of wisdom and revelation of the knowledge of him. We got to pray that God will give people the spirit. But we, we have to begin to pray. Wouldn't it be amazing if we stop praying for a lot of mature stuff that God going to add to you and really begin to pray prayers with substance? What, what is this prayer of substance? The spirit, the spirit of wisdom. I pray that God will give the spirit of wisdom to, his, to us, his people. Not only the spirit of wisdom, but revelation in the knowledge of him, that we will have revelation in the knowledge of the one we in. Come on, man. Don't you want wisdom and revelation knowledge of the one that you're in? Revelation knowledge means revelation knowledge means insight in the way he moved, the way he think, the way he feel, the way he operate. I want insight. If you're going to go into something, you ought to go into it so much that you want to know how it moves, function. In him, the Bible says, in him we live and move and have our being. In him we live, move, and have our being. Well, I got to know how he live, move, and have his being so I can know how I'm called to live and move and have my being. Anybody's noticing that as we're studying this, that the, the, the desire should be in him and the prayer should be for his wisdom and revelation knowledge of who he in who he is. And why? Because if I'm called to be, if from if in the morning, if I'm called to be like him from the foundation of the world, I need to know his wisdom. I need to the beginning of all wisdom is to fear, reverence the Lord. And I believe when we get in him, we can reverence the Lord. Any any statement? Anybody? What do you all think? I think I, I'm going to say this. I believe the problem is some of the biggest struggle is that when we were in the world, we're struggling with being in the world versus trying to come being in him. One has to go. Jesus said, I kept them in my eyes. I kept them in your word. And now they're, they're no longer of the world. So being in him will take you out of being in the world. Keep reading. Let's go. Let's be smart. Let's read. We got a couple of hands up. Okay, go ahead. Let me go ahead. Let me go ahead. What's going on, everybody? Hey. Um, just wanted to say, um, just wanted to make a little quick comment, man. Um, one of the, the the first the first thing we was talking about as far as like you know, him hearing hearing their faith and their love, right? It's like. Mm -hmm. Is there anybody that heard of your love and of your faith, right? Because it's not it's not the people that is testifying about how much love they got since they got saved. It's not the people that's testifying about their faith. It's other people that is saying that is saying how much faith that they have and how they walk and how they moving in love, um, how they loving on the other saints, right? So it, it, it's just it's just it's just something to ask to examine yourself and to say, okay, well, would anybody testify that I'm moving in faith? Would anybody testify that I'm moving in love, right? Because that is that is extremely important because because nobody is even Jesus, Jesus said, you know, I don't need the in John, um, I think the fifth chapter, he said, you know, I could testify myself, but I don't need to do that. But I got one that could testify for me, and and, and you know you tell the truth, right? So it's like it's mm -hmm. like our testimony of ourselves is not is not is not it, it doesn't hold too much credibility 
but we want to make sure that the people that is over us are able to testify are we moving that that we are moving in faith and that we are also moving in love you know what i mean and, and i think you know it's amazing for for paul to acknowledge that and to be able to to, to say hey i can hear it and another thing too it teaches us how to pray and what to pray about because paul is saying i'm always praying for y'all right so paul is letting us know that if you yes. if you if you find yourself running out of things to say when you're praying that's probably because you're not praying for your brothers and sisters enough right and, and that's uh, and i'm first partaker of that sometimes you know you, even yeah, when you try you got nothing but a short prayer maybe two three minutes maybe four or five minutes right and that's really because we're not mm -hmm. paul is telling us what we should be praying about right one of the things we should be praying, and I think that the young lady, one of the um, the ladies that spoke um, before said it, you know, we, we got to be praying for one another. We got to be lifting one another up and to see them for one another and also acknowledging um, the faith and the love that we see as, as a means to encourage them. Because because Paul was also encouraging them too and building them up and letting them know I'm rooting for you. I see I see what you got going. If anything, I want you to continue to go forward in it and to continue to learn of Christ because to know Christ is to love him. To know Christ is the desire to die for him. So when we feel when we feel like we can't go that far in Christ, in Christ, that's because we don't truly know him the way we should. Because because for, for, for Paul to be willing to die for him, for the disciples, all of them to be willing to die for Jesus and to be willing to die for the kingdom, it was because they... I, I wouldn't say they know the, they know the, the, the everything about Christ because I don't think we'll, we'll need eternity to, 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 to know everything about Christ. But they knew enough to be able to say, you know what, I'm willing to die for this. To die is gain. And, and, and Paul had gotten to that point and that's what he wanted. He was in that space already and, and he wanted that for the saints that was coming behind him. And I think that's the same thing you would want for us too, to continue to study Christ, right? Um, like Apostle say, you know, how how can we be truly? If you're in the house but you you haven't been in every room, then you might be missing a few things. And we could be in Christ, but we haven't really hit the 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 any you know we haven't gotten that deep into we is. And, 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 and if we just go deeper, if we just seek a little bit harder. I think all we're going to see is the, is the beauty, you know? There's so much beauty and so much love and so much compassion. When you read through the Bible and you read through the words and you see the love, you see the compassion, you see the faithfulness, you see, you see, you, you see why he needs to be worshipped. You see why he said, you know, you, you should honor me the way you honor my father. And if you can't honor me in that way, then, then you don't honor my father either. Because Jesus is that representation of God. He's that image. That's the image that we saw. And he reflect every good thing, every amazing thing about who God is. So the more we know him, the better we'll be for it. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Joseph. Thank you. I think Adina has her hand in your. Um, I, I was just gonna say because um the part where it talks about um, asking God for the spirit of wisdom and revelation. I just wanted to share how um, in Genesis. In two, okay. of, of him. Okay. Re, re, I want to just make sure we say that because it says the wisdom and revelation of him. Yes, the wisdom Not and him. revelation of him. And I just okay. want to share how right. in Genesis, it talks about in the beginning, um, God said, um, you know, God made light and there was light and it was good. But later on, it talks about the sun and the stars and the moon. So we know he's not talking about a physical light. And I was in Proverbs the other day and um, and I read this and uh, this is wisdom talking about herself. Well, it's described as a woman, but she says, the Lord brought me forth as the first of his works before the deeds of old. I was formed long ages ago at the very beginning when the world came to be. When there was no watery depths, I was given birth, right? So that wisdom correlates with that, um, you know, that theme throughout the Bible where there's light and darkness and that the light is wisdom, but the wisdom of God, because wisdom defines herself as the fear of the Lord and the knowledge of God. And so um, I was just like thinking that that is so great because that's what Jesus says. I was in the beginning. 
I am the word of God, you know? So it's that whole thing just showing us that what we're asking, like if we want wisdom, if we want knowledge, then what we're really asking for is to be in Christ because that is wisdom. You know, he is the wisdom that was made from the beginning. So I just wanted to share that. That's powerful. That's powerful. But uh, I mean, I love it. That's powerful. Uh, Coach Love. Yeah, one of the ones to say when you talk about being in, and one thing we always have to be mindful of is this: is that at the very beginning he said, "Let us make man in our likeness, our right image." And yeah. So he's always arranging situations so that we can become in his image, and that so if we keep keep that at the forefront of mind, this is what it's all about. It's it's okay for you to get a house, it's okay to get a car, but his main agenda at the very beginning, this is number one agenda. What Christ and God, what Jesus and God was saying, let us make man, and not it, not in a physical appearance, but in moral character. Let us make man in our likeness of image. What is what is an example of what he looks? What what is in in the fruit of the spirit? Galatians five and twenty two and twenty three, or First Corinthians thirteen. So if we always keep that in perspective, that this is the main agenda, not the other stuff. It's already there. He said, allow the predestined. So he's not, his main focal point is not trying to get us that because in reality, the foundation of the world, he said, I've already given that to you. But what I want you to get more than anything else is for you to become, become like me. He said, let us make man in our likeness of our image. That's all I want to point out. I, 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 I love that. I want to say this just to piggyback on something that uh, 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 Coach Love said. If we kind of look at, life today, everything around surrounding us, you have, you know, it's almost like you got food, but there's food around us, there's clothing. There's still a lot of things around us. There's like, like everything. Um, and it rains on the just as well as it's unjust, meaning that there's food. And then, you know, God tells his church, when I was hungry, give me food. When I was thirsty, you gave me drink. When I was thinking, they said, Lord, when do we do these things? He said, when you have done it to the least, you have done it unto me. So we see that the sons and daughters of God are to make sure even other people have food and have drink and have clothing and make sure they're provided for, that they're, they're provide, provided for. But we must do that in Christ. But what I found out even as we go on, as we're reading this, the in Christ being in him, is it being manifested Um in relationships, and I believe, can I, and I'm going to ask a question, you know, we have people that are on here that's married, we have people on here that have children, we have people on who are single, who has friends, how many of you all would say in this time now you are having trials and trying, and trying times when it comes to different, different types of relationships that you are involved in, maybe with mom or sisters or brother, how many of us would say that you are having trying times, it may be with, you know, school with boys and girls or a uh, situation by, by your thumbs up. How many of us say, would say that? Okay, we got a couple of okay. uh, I've noticed that the majority of people are lifting their thumbs up and saying that. So if we kind of look at it and, I, and I'm, I'm, I'm kind of going being in Christ um, will cause us to be able to deal as Father Robert was saying, Coach Robert was saying, in the fruit of the spirit, being in Christ, the manifestation of that, uh, Christ in us, should have us learning how to deal with our husbands, our sisters, our brothers. That's why one thing about it, the reward is never, and I'm gonna say this, but under, the reward is never getting married at the end of a situation, or this and that. The reward is always Christ. Why? Because it's me being in him that if I do get married or I do have a friend or I do my mother and parents, whatever, it is me being in him and in, 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 in him I live and move and have my being that I can treat or, or, or move in a way in these situations when I'm being tried. And I'm going to tell you something. And that can be very trying because when you're in Christ and you want to operate in Christ and yet you're dealing with maybe a, a wife or a husband or you're dealing with a friend or you're dealing with someone that sometimes you being in, well, there could be times that you're being in Christ can cause you to speak a truth 
or to move or function in a certain truth that reproves a certain situation that they may not like it to be reproved. Oh, we don't, we're going to talk tonight. We're going to get this because the Bible says, what does light have to do with darkness? Let's just reprove that word. Now, let me tell you what, let me, let me explain to it and, and explain it in a way Adina did it. That light means the wisdom of God. So the wisdom of God in a situation in darkness can what? Darkness can be ignorance. So there can be a certain type of ignorance. That means un not, they're ignorance and you mean unknowing of the truth of God that the light, the wisdom of God can begin to shine true in the area. Because if you're going to be watching, if you're going to be sealed by the Holy Ghost, and the Holy Spirit, watch it. The Bible says that we are sanctified through that word. That word is truth. The Holy Spirit is to guide us in all truth. Sometimes truth hurt, especially when it's being exposed in us that we are not really operating in truth in that situation. Can we get an amen? Mm. And sometimes, that why is God talking? I want to talk about this tonight. Why? Because I've seen people who call themselves friends with other people in situations, but they ignore the truth in that situation. Not only do they ignore it, they applaud certain things that they know it is not lined up with the word of God, and yet you call them friend. Well, the Bible, Jesus said, the scripture says, that I call, he said, when I call, he said, I'll call you friend because I keep nothing hidden. What was Jesus saying to them? I call you friend because I keep nothing hidden. He says, you're my friend and I keep you nothing hidden. So Peter, I will rebuke you. I'm going to tell you that you're going to deny me three times. Oh, come on, man. Y'all got to get it. Peter, you know, Peter, you my boy. And that must have been a very painful thing for Jesus to tell Peter. Yeah, Peter, I hear you talking about you're going to die for me. But because I'll keep nothing hidden from you because you're my friend, that you're going to deny me three times. I'm also going to tell you, Peter, that the enemy desire to sip you as weak. But because, I, because I'm praying for you, Hmm. See, we don't like that truth. Uh, uh, believe me, I, don't, I didn't say you. I said we. We don't sometimes like the truth that 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 love that love reveals. We and we try to hide. and see. That's why. But see, truth. The Holy Spirit is a discerner of truth, and it walks in love. And when you are when, watch, when you are in Christ, see, we like we have a way. The Bible says it's going to become a way. Y'all got to get this. The scripture says this, there's a way unto man that seem it right, but it leads to destruction. And people like, you see this person sleeping with this person, sleeping, you call yourself a, your, their friend. And yet we're going to learn, in, we're going to learn being in Christ that, you know what, if they really your friend and they are willfully sitting like that, then there are some ways that you're supposed to behave according to the word of God dealing with them. That will cause them to understand that that behavior is not acceptable. But you, but if you say that, you know, no, no, love means love does not mean being down with a behavior that can cause them to be destroyed. Love does not mean looking in the opposite direction when you see somebody. That's not love. Okay, we're gonna see it. We're gonna see it played out. And because if you love me, give me, you know what? Come on, I'm gonna say something. If you love me, give me the truth. And then if I if I got a problem with that truth, pray for me. Love corrects. But but I want to show you how deep this goes in being in Christ. Go ahead. Okay, verse 18. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people and his incomparably great love for us who believe. Mm. That mm. Anybody want to Man, I want you to know. Look, 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 look. I want you to know the in depth of the in depth of your calling, the love for, that God has for His people, and to under to have wisdom and understanding to the point of it. Because let, let, let me tell you why I'm saying this. Why are we understanding? Because I've seen this. I've seen this in myself. I've seen this in people. Um, I'm not going to tell you this because I'm worried about it. I'm, I'm going to hurt your feelings. I'm not going to say this because I'm not, I don't want to. So you're going to let me walk in a way that's displeasing to God because you worried about my feelings getting hurt. 
See, I'm going to tell you, we, we got some stuff going on today that it sound good, but it ain't godly. But I need you to understand the magnitude of this, 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 this gospel, this love. This is saving love. And saving love saves, don't want nobody. Saving love, hmm, being that I gotta, you know, I gotta tell you, I might, I might be hated because of saving love. I might be despised and rejected because of saving love. You might not want to hang out with me no more because of saving love. Okay, let's read it. Let's let's finish too. Let's let's see. Okay, that power is the same as the mighty strength he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead and seated him at his right hand in heavenly realms, far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, and every name that is invoked, not only in the present age, but also the one to come. And God plays all things under his feet and appointed him to be head over everything for the church, which Wait, is who's, his body. Who's, who's the head of the church? Christ. And, and, and has put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church. So we, 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 so we, we would all agree that Christ is actually the head of the church. Since yes. He found out in chapter one that he's gathering all things to him, that we have to be in him. Okay, keep going. Verse which is his body. The it again. Phone, which is his body. The fullness of him who fills everything in every way. So the head is developing his body. Okay, keep on reading. We're going to go to two. Chapter two, as for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world. And okay, let's stop right there for a minute. Say that again now. We got to read that again. Say that again. Say that again. As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world. So when you and I follow, when someone is following the ways of this world, they are dead in their sins and trespass, trespasses. I don't understand it because we see people following the ways of the world. And yet, they, because they say Christ, but they say Christ, but we see them following. You got to hear what he's saying. Listen to the word. Listen to the words. Like he said, and you have a quicken who are dead in your trespasses and sins, where in the time past, you walk according to the courses of this world. You, When somebody is walking according to the courses of this world, why are we calling this saved? Because when they are walking to the courses of this world, I don't... Uh, we were dead in our trespasses and sins. We're in the time past, yea, walk. We walk. We walk in a certain way that showed us. We walk in a certain way that was aligned up with the world. With the world. How, we, how many know what we all did? Amen. We all did. Keep reading. Unless anybody want, if you got something you want to say, just lift your hand up, lift your thumb up. We'll talk about it. Uh, keep reading. I'll see. And that of the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. So according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. When we walk according to the world, we are walking as children of disobedience. And we are being guided by the prince of the air. The influencer, them, them demonic influences. Now, y'all, now what we got to get in this, remember this. I want all of us to remember this because we learned it. We're we taking this study. When Peter, when Jesus turned around and rebuked Satan when he was dealing with Peter, 
He says, Satan, you are not mindful of the things of God. The prince of the air is not trying to lead us in a way to please God. That's why when Paul is speaking earlier and he says, wherefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and the love, to the, he says, Paul was praying. He was impressed, like, like Joseph said, he's testifying that they are moving according to the word of God, which pleases God. They are moving according to the word of Jesus, which is pleasing God. But then he shows down here in chapter two that this he's talking about a people that which we were, where we moved one time in a way of the world. But then when we moved according to the world, we were moving according to the prince of the power, the prince of powers of the air, and the spirit that now working in the children of disobedience. There are children of disobedience. What is what are you what what are you being disobedient to? Meaning yet you're not in compliance with the word of God in faith. In other words, somebody can't testify about the fact that you are in alignment with the word of God in that area. And when we are not in alignment with the word of God, we are the children of disobedience. Because, no, come on, let's come on, let's just put it together. When your mama tell you to do something or your daddy tell you to do something and you don't do it, we call that disobedience. But I like when he said, and you would have been quickened. In other words, you were dead in your trespasses and sins. We're in, there we go, we're in. Then he said, we're in, in time past. They walked. So if either we are walking in him or we are walking in the ways of the world, being led by the prince of the world, by the prince of power, the principalities, the powers of darkness, and we are children of disobedience. You know, how I many of y'all got big sisters? Or you got big sisters, you was a little sister, or you, and you ever heard them big sisters or big brothers say, girl, you know you ain't supposed to be doing that? Shut up. Man, not your own business. Come on, y'all. Come on. If you ever had family, you had more children in the house, you might have had one sister, one brother, or some friend. Man, what you doing? You know you ain't supposed to be doing that. Then they'll turn to you tomorrow. Snitches get snitches. Snitches get snitches. They're going to try to tell you if you snitch, because snitch means if you tell the truth on me. I, I was watching this gospel movie yesterday. I'm going to say this. I was watching this gospel movie one yesterday. And in this movie, I want to tell you this scene, what was funny. This guy, it was a guy in the movie. They were, it was called, I can't remember. It was, uh, it was about, they were, um, they were having a uh, church meeting, church meeting. And all of them had got robbed. They had got robbed. And the people who got robbed, they, they came together in church and they were talking about it. And they come together because it was, a, it, was, it, was, it was really a painful experience. Years later, they're having this church thing. And, and, and the guy in the church uh, who, who, who got, went to jail came to apologize, to ask for forgiveness for those who, that the pain was inflicted on. And the guy said something I thought was very interesting. He said, they asked him, he said, I ain't have nothing to do with that. He said, they just came to my house and one was my cousin. And because he was my cousin, I went with them and, and they asked him, so you gonna tell me you ain't know what your cousin was doing? Then the girl was saying, so you didn't see your cousin and put that hood on their head? He said, yeah, but he said, that's my cousin. And if that's my cousin, I'm not gonna go nowhere. So he was so close to his cousin to back in his room, that he ended up in y'all better hear this. He ended up doing a prison sentence for his cousin because he was willing to support something which brought him into bondage, which cost him years of his life. What am I trying to say? Sometimes we could be so close to something that people are doing wrong, and you have you have a problem understanding and what you're close to can bring in that situation cost him. And then he's gonna talk about when he saw what they was gonna do, he drove off. But he only drove a little bit down the street to my man, that's my cousin, I'm a rider. I ain't gonna leave him all the way. So he was unwilling to leave his cousin all the way while his cousin was what? Being disobedient. And the Bible says, watch what he says. He says, according to the prince of the powers of the air and the spirit of now working in the disobedience. But then he tell, he says that, um.
Watch this. The, ch the children of disobedience are going to reap the wrath of God. So when you come in fellowship with somebody that you that you know they're doing wrong, then you, you're going to also reap that wrath that that person going to get. Let me, let me help. Let me help you understand. Let me understand. Um, there was a guy named Jonah. Yeah, who knows the story about Jonah in the well? When Jonah was in the well, and Jonah was supposed to go to Nineveh and preach, but Jonah chose to be disobedient. And he thought, and he got on a boat that was going to toss up, toss up, toss up, whatever, man, going in the opposite direction. Because of Jonah's disobedience, everybody on that boat was now in a storm. And the storm started getting crazy. Now, and the Bible says that they began to toss things from the boat. So when you connect to somebody that's disobedient, not only do you start talk, you, 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 you're going in a storm, but you're going to start suffering loss. Because the Bible says they begin to toss things from the boat to try to feel, to keep it afloat. But the storm didn't stop. And the water began to get rougher and rougher. But one thing about, oh my God, Jonah was willing to say at the end that Jonah was like, it's me. It's me. Because they start wondering, what is this going on? And at the end, they had to, watch this. You people wouldn't call this love, but they had to cast Jonah overboard. Sometimes you have to cast people overboard, but don't worry about it. God got a well waiting for them. Some of y'all going to get me. Have you ever had a well waiting for you? Some of them don't lie. What is a well? A well, Jonah was swallowed up by a well. For three days, he's in a place where I, I where, you know, the, the, the prodigal son had a well waiting for him. What? In the pig's pen. A well is a place that will help you come to yourself. A well is a place, man, come on, somebody got to hear this. A well is a place where you have to come to yourself. You start realizing that you are living beneath who you are called to be. You start realizing that the hell you're going through, this ain't because of God. This is because you are disobedient. But God's mercy is there with the well. And what's interesting about the well, y'all got to get this. While you are going through your disobedience, God knows that that well is so effective that the well is moving you in the direction of what you're going to be obedient. Oh, y'all got to get what I'm just saying. The well is swimming Jonah in a direction in which Jonah needs to be dis, uh, where he needs to be obedient because the, what Jonah is at that point is going to point to what the, the, the suffering of Jonah. Because I don't know if you really want to understand. I don't understand the magnitude, of, but I believe the word. The, the, the whale is a huge beast. Don't let nobody tell you that a whale can't hold a human being. That's a, you ever seen a whale? That's a huge, that's a doggone ark. A whale can be the size of a doggone ark, football fields. So I know it can hold a human being. Now you in this room. One thing you worried about in that human. One thing you worried about. Are you going to die in this? Have you ever been in a situation? Look so chubby, like man. I don't know if I'm gonna make it out of here. It seems like it's those death-threatening situations that cause you to realize, God, <laughs> I really want to obey you now. I really want to do what you're telling me to do now, God. Jonah's in the well, but, but watch this. But God is so assured that what he has created to bring you to the end of yourself is going to happen, that what he created it to bring you to the end of yourself is ushering you in the direction to fulfill what he wants you to do. Somebody come. Y'all got it. See, 
That husband might be ushering you to the place to fulfill what God, want, what God wants out of you. That wife might be ushering you to the place to fulfill what God wants out of you. That job may be ushering you to fulfill what God. Mm. Mm. That ministry might be ushering you to a place where God wants to fulfill what's going to come out of you. Hmm. Or going to court. There, there you go, Joseph. Going to court, hospital, waiting, waiting, waiting for trial. Oh, I know about that well. I know about that well, boy. But that well was ushering me in a direction. Because how many of y'all know that the well was swimming toward what God told Jonah to do? The well was swinging toward, the well was swimming toward what God was requiring of Jonah. That pig pen was leading the prodigal son toward the pathway of his father. That hospital bed, bed is leading you toward the purpose and the plan where we already found out the purpose to be in. See, I got to be in, and sometimes whatever God is, whatever God has created is leading me to move in what God has designed me to do. Go ahead, uh, Maximilian. We got to get this. This thing is good. Go ahead, Maximilian. Um, Somebody want to turn my, Max mic on? Oh, I don't know. No, I'm sorry about that. I accidentally ran my finger across the keyboard and I hit the unmute button or the raise the hand button. Oh, you were just getting so excited. I understand. <laughs> no, but sometimes the situation that we're in is leading you to the purpose. Though you, but what? But sometimes we got in that situation because of disobedience. Oh, yeah. That's why, I, let me tell you something. Man, y'all better, sometimes God will give you what you want. Ooh, it ain't what he wanted. He'll give you that husband what you want. He'll give you that job and what you think you, why? Because that's going to be your will. You ain't never prayed like you're praying now. <laughs> Come on, y'all. Let's be real. We ain't never desired the word like we desire it now. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Maximilian. Like the Jews, the Jews wanted a king. So he gave them. Oh, boy. He, oh, he gave them one. He gave them one to let them catch. Oh, this. He gave them. Oh, he gave them Samuel. I mean, he gave them Saul. America don't want God. America want to marry who they want to marry. America want to kill babies. So God said, what I'll do is I'll give you something. Uh, you want, uh, I, I, what I got, I'll, I'll pull my hands back and let Corona, I, I'll pull my hands back and let Corona 19 come in and let what and let your well usher you back to your hump, to your knees, to back to your place where you understand I am God. You don't tell me what to do. I'm, I am God. I'm Lord. But you know that sometimes people resist. And yet the fire, and then you get, they resist. So now, instead of it being over, now you got Delta. The virus mutating. Get it up there. I'm going to tell y'all something. Can I, can I share something with y'all this? This, what I'm talking about, what God is talking about tonight is not for the world. He's talking to the saints. Jonah was a man of God. Israel, as Maximilian just said, were the children of God. The prodigal son was a part of, he was the father's son. These situations that where we see this disobedience, this disobedience is coming from the church. And God is saying, he told us in 2021, turn your eyes back to me. But we got our eyes up on the world, what we want, when we want. Do y'all know, right? Can I, I, I'm going to tell y'all something. Man, people, I, 
We got to stop this. Do you know people are treating getting married like it's being saved? Oh, you have finally got your way. What are you talking about? Me and Mary ain't got nothing to do with salvation. That ain't, God didn't save you just to get, the, the, the reward of God is not a husband. It's the husband. Because if you are not in God, if you're not in the husband, you're not going to know how to obey the husband. Y'all don't want to talk. I'm not speaking against man, but I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm watching things. I'm like, is people losing their mind? They talking about marriage like, oh my God, like Matt, or somebody just walked into salvation and the glory of God came up on them again. You got you getting mad. Oh. You better hope you in Christ. Because saving a soul is the Bible didn't say when one person gets married, heaven begins to rejoice. He said, when a soul gets saved, heaven begins to get rejoice. I'm not, marriage is good, but the way people, these, and we're all women, please stop it. Stop this foolishness. Well, your, your whole serving God, your whole message about God is so, are you trying to get a man? You better be, you bet your whole message about God should be about you serving people. Your, oh my God. You know, oh, can I give y'all scripture so we got so we can back it up? Can y'all tell me this? Tell me if Ruth was looking for a boy. Matter of fact, the Bible says that Ruth was in the field and her reputation came about that she wouldn't mess with the young men. She was not, in other words, Ruth was not, she, I mean, she didn't allow herself to be poured into the young men and the men that was around her. Ruth was about serving Naomi. How come we got these false prophets and women all talking about looking for some man, but they can't even serve Naomi? See, y'all don't, I know people don't want, see, I, yeah, when you start, remember I told you, remember when I told you, this love, love is bringing order, a, 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 my job is to bring order, love is bringing order, but when you start bringing order, people are not going to like order, because the Bible says that a woman affection should be to, the, to God, a single woman, a single woman, do you know the Bible says this, read it for yourself, that God only permit a married man or woman to entertain their flesh. It's, do y'all know how much revelation is in there? There's so much revelation. Read it in the Bible. When it comes to the, yep, when you come with order, you expose. So true. Now watch this. If you go read your Bible, you will begin to see that the Bible says that when we are unsaved, when we are unmarried, we are called to serve God. But the Bible says when a person gets married, then they can begin to now serve them. He is, so if you're not married, then why are you, what's all this stuff of you entertaining your flesh with this person? I, I didn't say it. That's what the Bible says. And we were like, well, I just need to get to know them. Know them in the Lord. Amen. At least if you know him in the Lord, it's going to be holy. Come on. And you won't find the Lord saying to you what he said to me. Why can't I wait on the Lord? I was like, okay, Lord, I'm sorry. No, listen. Y'all think I'm joking. I think it's in Corinthians, the second, seventh chapter, right? Kenley, where is it? Kenley, get it. Get it for me, Kenley. I want to show y'all something. So y'all won't think this apostle saying this. This is one body. There is, and when, when Paul's speaking on this manner, God speaks about when it comes to entertaining your, when he's saying that God only permits a husband, uh, when we are not married, we are supposed to serve God full time with all your heart, soul, and youth. But when you are married, when a man is married, or a woman is married, like, like uh, Amanda's married, when she's, because she's married, she has to also attend to her husband needs. So that means even though she's serving God, she is now permitted to attend to her husband's needs. Mm. 
Yeah, yeah. Okay. He ain't say attend to her boyfriend needs. You got it? Can you? Read, no, put, put Kenley Mike on. Yeah, uh-huh. I'll mute. Okay. okay. Um, verse 32, that's first of uh, Corinthians chapter 7. Um, verse 32 says, but I want you to be without care. He who is unmarried cares for the things of the Lord, how he may please the Lord. Verse 33, but he who is married cares about the things of the world, how he may please his wife. There is a difference between a wife and a virgin. And it goes on to say, the unmarried woman cares about the things of the Lord, that she may be holy, both in body and in spirit. But she who is married cares about the things of the world, how she may please her husband. Now, now, now watch it. Just that revelation alone lets you know God is not down with the girlfriend and boyfriend. Thing. That if anybody ever tell you God don't speak about the girlfriend and boyfriend thing, I that whole verse right there tell you God ain't you can't why? Because he's saying only a woman that's married that her that she can when she she can attend to the things of her husband. You know, you want to say something? Go ahead. Did you want to say something? That, that, oh, maybe, maybe, okay. Let's, do we understand that verse? See, no, I thought you wanted me to say something because I saw that it was saying for me to be unmuted, but I don't have anything to say. Okay. No, because I, I think I called you on your earlier. But watch this. What I'm trying to show you is that it's written right there in the word. So when they tell you, well, I want to just get to know him and I just want to spend time with him and I just want to, you know, cuddle up and, because we engage with his neck. Well, uh, that's, that's, the, that's, this, that's, that's what the world do. Because the scripture says that you can't give him that type of attention. He can't give you that type of attention unless you're a wife. Now, I don't know about you. Come on, I'm going to let Coach look. But I want to say this to you. Hey, I have, man, I find myself early in my marriage years, I find myself have to repent. Anybody find themselves have to repent if you're married? Mm -hmm. Just be honest, you have to repent. You're, you're in certain thoughts, you have to repent. Um, but see, see, but watch this, this is what we'll say. I want to show you something. We're in, in the time past, they walk as according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children disobedient among whom also we all had our conversations in time past in the lust of our flesh, in the desires of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of our flesh and the mind. We all walk that way, fulfilling the desires of our flesh and our mind. We all walk that way. But, you, but, but, but how are we going to get in God and still be walking that way? Even when you get engaged, that's not your boo. He said, you ain't married yet. Engagement means preparation. Preparation means what? For marriage. Go ahead, Coach Love. Uh, I see this happens a lot. You know, unfortunately, when, you know, they take the scripture and they take it way out of context. Like, okay, so now I'm married now, so I don't have to do nothing for God at all. God is still number one. He's still your number one priority. But all he said, what he's, well, all, well, just part of what he's saying is, I'm going to give you permission at times to maybe not do as much as you were doing before, but to say you're going to totally drop your commitment to doing the things of God. That's that's false. Because I see that happens a lot of times. You see a lot of people now when they get married, all of a sudden they don't even attend church. They don't come to street ministry. They didn't do nothing for God at all. Oh, I'm married. So no, 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 no. All that really means is, you work your schedule around whatever God is telling you to do. Come on, pray. You know, I'm a stickler for praying and being led. You let God lead you on the things that he omits you. Of course, when you have these responsibilities, you're married, you have kids, he may not re require you to do every single thing, but you let God tell you to what you should and should not do. You don't take it upon yourself. Oh, I'm married now, so I don't have to do No, 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 no. God is still number one. So, but 
In this day and time, I see it happen so many times. Now I'm married and I got kids, so now uh, so I, I, I can't come to street mission come to church. But watch this. When it's time to go to work for that nine to five, and I'm not saying the nine to five is insignificant because I truly believe this. If God gave you that job, that's your post where you minister the gospel. But when it's time to, when it's for that, you find a babysitter. But now when it's when it's time to come to church or do street ministry or, or any activities outside of uh, outside of what you know what your nine to five have, you can't do it because I'm married, got kids. That's a big excuse, and that's not of God. And if we have to be very careful to watch that. You could lure yourself right into a bad situation because you're thinking, like, okay, well, this is what the script said. No, 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 no. God's the number one. Let God lead you on on how you handle that and what you do. But yes, He's giving permission to you know curtail what you do but let god lead you that's all i want to say listen listen when we talk about getting married and not getting married you're still in christ you're still in christ um i think it was i'm gonna let jatil go then ashley i think jatil i don't know who was first uh, whoever to just choose one let them go on um, I was going to say, what would you say to the people who says, okay, I'm not dating, but I'm courting? Let me tell you something. What's funny about that? You know what's funny about people today? I'm going to tell you, the church is so fake. Let me tell you why it's so fake. This is what the church do. It'll take a worldly thing, and, it'll think it, and because it changes the name of it, it think because it changes the name of it, that it means it's acceptable unto God. They think it's acceptable. Well, it's acceptable to God. And then this is the part. This is what, then they don't, why? Because what I think a lot of times is they don't understand what God has really designed for order in it. Let me give an example. Let me give all this an example what God designed for order. What's saying it was structure the world. First of all, we are all brothers and sisters. In the body, we, 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 because the Bible says, let me, let me give you scripture. Um, he finally says that in all dispensation of the fullness of time, that he might gather together in one all things into Christ. We are all being gathered into Christ. We are all members one of another. So you're going to marry your brother or your sister because you can't be unevenly yoked. You're all gathered together. And we're fitly joined, in, watch me, we're fitly joined together increasing in love. So love has some characteristics as someone said earlier, fruit of the spirit. Love has self-control. Can I get a amen? Love has joy and peace. Now let me, let me explain something to you. The Bible says, know those who labor among you. Mm. Because if we all working in the body, which we're going to learn as we go through Ephesians, if we're all in the body and we're working, you got to know, oh, please, sons and daughters of God, stop looking at the, stop looking at the hips, the lips, the breasts, the, the, the money. Stop letting the world, because God doesn't judge by the outward appearance. He knows the heart of a man. And he told you and you, he told you and me, try the spirit. That means that word try means to examine. Know who they are laboring for. So the first thing when you meet someone in the kingdom, it is not about them trying to labor for you. It's about who are they laboring for because it's a terrible thing to turn your heart over to a demon or someone who is possessed or someone who is persuaded by a demon. Are y'all with me? So he said, what? So number one, when you meet someone, ladies, and do not let the world, I mean, we talked about it, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you. He said, we are not the children of the disobedient. We're not those who are led by our flesh. Why are we not those? We were once led by our flesh and our own desires. Why? Corinthians, here goes, the second chapter says this, among whom also we all had our own conversations, mean our behavior in time past, in the, watch, the lust of our flesh. We all were moving at one time by the lust of our flesh. Design. Your list was designed by the lust of your flesh. Because if you go around calling somebody ugly, you only call them ugly because you see through the brokenness of your own heart. Because I dare you go tell God, I dare you go tell God that you don't want him because to him or you don't want her because to her, they are ugly. God said, and I, I can see God leading you right now. He said, you know what you sound like to me? You sound like Samuel. When Samuel said, there must be a king in this room among all these men, because these are men of great statue, of great bond. 
But then Samuel, when, when Samuel saw David and he said God had not chosen any of them based on Samuel, what? Perspective of what he had saw, men of great stature, good. Then he's when he saw David, but this is but a this is just but a boy. But this is a boy, what? Who killed, this is a boy who slayed lions and bears, lions and bears, lions and bears. For sheep. God had him out there slaying lions and bears, meaning that he put his life at risk. For the thing that he was tending to. Are we learning something? So you want a man who's going to put his life at risk for the thing he's attending to. Because if he don't put his life at risk, because he's commanded by the word of God to give his life for you. Oh, we're going to get this tonight. So watch, watch it. He says, so know those who labor among you. Come on, so we learn it. Don't, don't, don't be convicted. We all learn it. So he said, learn those. First, that's, that's the one I'm on. Know those who labor. Why? I need to know who you laboring for. I need to know, are you committed to the God that you said you sent? Are you committed to the God that you said sent you to me? Or are you committed to me and trying to use the God? Mm. And I want to tell you all something about uh, people who do that. I was talking to one of my spiritual daughters. And I'm going to tell you something about people who have these broad prophecies. People who like to release arrows without a target. People who like to release arrows without a target. These false prophets who like to release arrows without a target in hoping to hit something. Watch out for those false prophets who release arrows without, why? Because behind every arrow, there's something trying to fulfill it. See, false prophets behind their arrows is the lust. And behind their arrows is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye. Let the pride of life. And what's behind that arrow is him who comes to kill, steal, and destroy. So they'll tell you God sent you. The prophecy says the arrow hits you and it, it attacks to your flesh. And I'm gonna tell you something about that. That the people who don't, the people who don't want, who, the people who um who, who get usually get by who usually get hit by false arrows, they do not like to submit to leadership. They don't like witnesses. They don't like someone to be a witness that has uh, about authoritative leadership. They'll find their own witnesses to what they're talking about. They are, but the, the witnesses that they find do not have authority to be witnesses. Like their best friend. Like their buddy. She going to be the witness. Girl, I'm going to tell you something. You don't want the one that you've been talking to about your lust and your perversion, the one you were talking you don't want them to be the one prophesying to you. Oh, I don't know God. And I'm gonna tell you something, y'all may not think that what God's talking about is in the context of what we're talking about, but it is. Why? Because if you keep reading what he says, what he says, the, the conversation in time past of the lust of your flesh, fulfilling the desires of your nature, fulfill what he says, for your uh, desires of your flesh and of your mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as obedient. We were by nature seeking after our own desires, what, what our mind wanted. What is the heart? The, the heart. We wanted what our own mind wanted. We wanted what our own. He said, Your mind and your heart. He says, Your mind and your desire. Your mind wanted something. You already had a picture in your mind. Many of us can't get what God has for you because you got a picture already. You already have an image in your mind of what you want. But your image is connected to, oh, my, anybody being blessed tonight. Your image is connected to your fleshly desire. Not in God's love. Let me give you a second. Real quick. I'm, 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 actually, I'm going to come to you, but I want to give this real quick. After you know who they labor for, Jesus said, I no longer call you servant, because that's what a laborer is, one who labors, what I'm saying. but I call you friend. He's telling you the steps to relationship. He said, I no longer call you servant, but I call you friend. Watch what he says next, because I keep nothing hidden from you. So what is he telling us? Be careful without knowing who they serving, because if you start revealing your secrets, oh, you're on the phone talking about your heart's desire, oh, but you're talking to somebody that's led by their own desires. And do not be fooled, because the Bible says Satan will come like an angel of light. 
saying, God, God, but God says, watch what they labor. Watch it. When they go, watch it. Do they want to meet your pastor? Do they want to meet the men and women over your life? Do they want to, what, bless it. Do you see them on the battlefield? Do, what do you see them doing? Because let me tell you something. Ladies, when you, when you go to your husband, he has to be a shepherd to watch over your soul. So if he ain't got no heart for the loss, if he has no value for what God has value for, what make you think he gonna value your soul? The word says, I no longer, people say, well, if I can't date, if we can't get the, you should know your friends. Everything you need to know about your husband should be what you know about a friend. But let me tell you, let me, here go to wickedness. I need to know how he is in the bed. I need to know how he gonna do this and do that. Yeah, because you carnal. You carnal. You, and I have seen Christians do shows on Facebook, on Facebook, just like the Zoom, and they're so carnal. What do, I, what do you mean when I say carnal? Their mind, their, their mind and their flesh is after their own desires. They're not in Christ. And we're going to learn being in Christ, when you are in him, your mind is shifted and moved according to his desires. His will. It says it right here. Watch it. In whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him, being destinated according to the purpose of him. Let me say it again. Being being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. We are being predestinated according to the purpose of him. And this is what he just said. Listen, read it, read it for yourself. Read it for yourself. It's in verse 11. In whom also we have been obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things according to or after, I mean, work all things after the counsel of his own will. He's working, what you and you are predestined, he's working in you according to his will, not your desires. You can see right here, that's your desire. He's working it according to his will. Hmm. Go ahead, Ashley. I'm, I'm, I'm going to back off that thing right now because I know we don't lost about four or five people. They, they don't say the apostle, I'm done. You, 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 um, I'm done. Amen. Praise God. Um, I went too long, but um, I just wanted to piggyback on something. I'm not sure who spoke about marriage, but it really like, I don't know, it, it touched me in a way where I just, I felt like I needed to say this, like God's intent for marriage was to glorify him. So yes. to know your role as a single person um, to know your role as a single person and, you know, as a person in general, as a follower, you have to go to church and be in the assembly. And that's significant. But even more so, um, church is um, marriage. Our roles in life can change. And yes. it doesn't matter what, what title you have. And that's um, being a wife, you know, being a husband, um, you know, being a widow or whatever, but no matter what your position in Christ doesn't change. So God is, God is a God who's not of confusion and he's not going to lead you outside of his assembly. He's not, there's not going to be an excuse, but instead your life is going to, is going to maneuver around, um, around what Christ wants and what he wants in it, is his will. It's his realm, you know, it's, um, we work according to his will. We, we work according to him and whatever he chooses to place you in a certain season as a wife or whatever, whatever your season is, it's always going to um, be aligned with what God wants you to do. And it would never be to have not enough time um, um, to go to church or to pray or, you know, so we should always be asking God, what is my purpose? What is my agenda? 
um, right now in this season, because maybe you don't know how to juggle life. Maybe you don't know how to juggle being a wife and being a mom. Um, you just had a child. Maybe you have multiple children like myself, because I was in that situation where I'm like, okay, Lord, how do I get this done? But I find that the more that I do what God wants me to do, the more that everything around me shifts um, to acknowledge him. And it's like, I'm not saying life is perfect and life is good, but it's much, it's, it's, it's a difference when you do it the opposite, you know, always just put, and that goes back to what you said about being, um, placing Christ as the head of yes. your life. Mm -hmm. Ashley, I'm going to tell you something. You just said, I'm going to read what you just said again. Um, what's being predestinated according to the purpose, what you just said is right here in scripture being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. Coming into Christ, he's working all things after the counsel of his own will. Even the husbands and wives he give us has to do with his purpose, to carry out his will. Go, go ahead. Um, and, 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 I, and I, want us, I want us to see something. I want us to see this tonight. We are looking at his will, but then when he goes into chapter two, he begins to show us our old nature, how we did function before we began to surrender and step in him and his will. So you can see the comparison between chapter one and like what Paul is saying, and he's talking about them being in Christ and you know, being in faith, what God is doing, building one, bringing all things into Christ and bringing us into his will. But then you see in chapter two, why he starts out with chapter two, talking about, and you have been he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins, where in time past, yea, walk, in time past we did, yea, walked according to the courses of this world, according to the prince of this power of the air the spirit that now working in the children of disobedience. And then he begins to show you what, what the children of, what was, what guides the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our own behavior in time past in the lust of our own flesh, fulfilling the desires of our own flesh and of, our, and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. But God, oh my God, but God, we're going we gonna, to, but God. But God, but God, but God. The transition is but God. See, you, 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 you're getting to know people and, and loving people. We have to know how to value souls beyond. I pray that we learn to value a soul beyond our own fleshly appetite. I don't know if I don't know if Coach if Coach Love wanted to say something or uh, check. Go ahead. Yeah, what I wanted to say was uh, I was talking to somebody about um, about marriage today, and and I was just talking to them about you know what the Bible says about you know in Him you think about in Him you think about in His will, uh, in His will is His word, and He says that in His in His word that wives you are to submit to your husband. And I said, it is a dangerous thing when I was speaking. And I said, it's a dangerous thing for you to submit to. This is the requirement of God when you are in marriage to submit to your husband. And I said, but it is a dangerous thing for you to submit to a man who does not want to read, no study, no pray, and he does, and he does not want to be led by the Spirit. I said, so I said to them, I said, so if you're not being led by the Spirit of God, who's leading you? And she said, the devil. I said, okay. I said, so, so you know, it, it, you, it, it, it will behoove you. And any any other woman of God to make sure that the person that God uh, that you believe that God has chosen for you that you make sure that you follow protocol. Uh, you know the Bible said, "Out of my opportunity, witness and let everything be said." Let God assure you of this is who He is because you are required by God to submit to Him. And so, so it it it'd be it, it'd be a crazy thing for you to find yourself submitting to somebody. Who don't really want to follow God? So that's that's what I, that's all I have to say. And let's read a little bit more. We about to call. We about to call. Let's just read a little bit more. Two. Uh, I'm gonna go to three. Let's read a little bit more. Then let's. Um, anybody have any thoughts? Let's read a little bit more. Go ahead. 
But because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ, even when we were dead in transgressions. He made us alive where? In Christ. So we became alive in where? Christ. Just like he said in, in, in the first verse, um, well, uh, faithfulness is in who? Christ. So we, have, if you are alive, you are alive in Christ. If you want to stay alive, you must stay within Christ. Go ahead. It is by the grace you have. It is by grace you have been saved, mm. and God raised us up with Christ and seated us with Him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus, in order that in the coming ages He might show the incomparable riches of His grace expressed in His kindness to us in Christ Jesus. Now, look at how many times you saw in Christ. Um, like three times in this mm. verse. Okay, let's let's let, let's go let's go over the three. Let's look at the three real quick before we call call night. Go go to the first. Okay, so the first um uh, made us alive with Christ. So we want to be made alive. We need to be in who? Christ. Alive in Christ Jesus, right? Yes. Because life of my, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and there's the way of the, to the Father by me. But Jesus said, he said in John, in, in John 10, he says, I have come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. So we were made alive. So if somebody's not in Christ, then they're not alive. They're still dead in their sins. So we're made alive in Christ. Keep reading. What's the second? Go ahead. And then it says um, that we were seated us him with him in heavenly realms in Christ. So we, we are seated above, oh my God. We are now seated up with, with him, in him, above. When we are in Christ, we are seated above. You're not beneath, you are above. He, 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 he called away, but he says, and has raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So God has made us sit in heavenly places. Now, y'all guys, so the enemy is your the enemy is your footstool. When you step in Christ, you have life. And not only do you have life, you have power. The enemy, when you step in Christ, the enemy has now become your footstool. Because now he has caused you to sit in heavenly places in him. And heavenly places mean above. Anybody? I know somebody praising. Somebody shouting and praising where they at. I know somebody getting their praise on. So you ain't just so it, 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 you 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 in this you in this world, but you don't look of this world because you in Him, and He has caused you to sit in heavenly places with in Christ. Go ahead, last one. And the last one is um, that He expressed His kindness to us in Christ Jesus. So let's get started. We got life in Christ. We've been raised up to sit in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And we have kindness because of his kindness in Christ. See, this is what, that's why I'm trying to tell you it's important to know what you're in. Because when you understand what you are in, you are understanding that you're in a place where there's life, where life dwells. You are in a place that is rising you above uh, of the enemy. Bring the rising you above. If the enemy is, watch this, if the enemy is the, air, the prince of the airway, well, guess what? You're in heavenly places. You're above him. You're above, you above him. And, and, and realms above him. And, you, and, and your, Satan is not equal. God is above him. And and it all because you are also in the kindness of God. Read a little bit more. It's just a, in his kindness. Through us in Christ Jesus. In verse 8. For it is mm -hmm. by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God. Not by works so that no one can boast. For we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Okay, we're going to, so when we are in, watch, in Christ Jesus, we are created to do good works, right? But we are his handiwork, workmanship, created in, so you watch it, you are created in Christ. So you got to be in Christ to even do good works. You are, you're not saved by works, but when you are in Christ, you can do good works. You've been created to do good works. 
So the only reason why you do good works is because you are in Christ Jesus. I didn't say it's right here in the scripture. He says, he says, wait a minute, where is it? Um, read it again. It says, for it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. I'm going to read verse 10 again. I like how he said here. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works which God has before ordained that we should walk in them. The good works that we're doing, we are to walk in them. Why does that make sense? Because it goes back to what Joseph was saying earlier and what the scripture was saying that Paul was testifying of when Paul testified, in other words, he saw, wherefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and your love, testifying of your good works, testifying of your love toward your brethren, testifying of you, uh, uh, how you are operating and moving in them, moving in the word, functioning in Christ Jesus. Not just you talking about Jesus, but you are functioning in him. Are there any, what do we think about that? Any comment? Adina, go ahead. Okay, tell Adina, go ahead. Sorry, I know I talk a lot. <laughs> no, you're okay. Stop apologizing. Go ahead. Um, I just wanted to bring out, um, so I was given a promotion at work, so my prayers have been, you know, God, leave me. What do you want me to do? Because I know this isn't about a promotion. And, um, and I've been seeking godly counsel. I'm like, oh, how do you be a boss? I've never been one before. And uh, yesterday I was led to this um, sermon and the man was talking about, um, he, was, he was describing the parable of the talents. And I never really understood the parable of the talents because I was always caught up, well, what are the talents? Well, who is this? Who is that? Who represents this? You know, and it's not so much about that instead of looking at it as a whole. And it actually, it dawned on me, the parable of the talents is about, um, is about your work ethic. And I don't mean just that work. I mean, your character as a human to do works on earth, right? And it's about um, thinking like, like God, right? So God cares about souls, or your employer cares about revenue, or, you know, your mom cares about keep, keeping the house clean. So you as a servant, you taking on that, that mindset of, I care like the person over me cares. You know, I care like the boss cares. So therefore my work shows that, you know, that's what the parable of the talents are. That's why God said about King David that I look at the heart because when King David was alone in the field, like you said, he fought bears and tigers for sheep. He took on the responsibility and the accountability of those sheep, like he made it his own, you know, and he represented that in the work he did fighting the bear and the tiger. And um, so I just wanted to say, like, there was a quote by uh, Martin Luther, right? And he says that, um, you know, the, 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 the Christian who makes shoes, right? God, God is not pleasing God by making shoes and putting little crosses on them, right? Um, he's pleasing God by making really good shoes because God cares about his craftsmanship is why he made him a, a shoemaker, you know? And sometimes like we think that, you know, uh, preaching the gospel has to look a certain way or being a Christian has to be all about what comes out of my mouth, you know, like, well, you know, not that it's not that too, but, but also it's by the way we, um, what we do with, our, with the talents, you know, taking on the mindset of Christ that, and that ownership, like, no, I'm accountable to this thing. So that's all I wanted to say. And while Dina was talking, this came to my spirit too. Even when we talked about the children of disobedient, um, can somebody tell me? Uh, we're gonna turn your mic on. What was John? What was Jonah commissioned to do? Because God brought this to my spirit before we end it. I want us to understand that this was me Jonah' measurement of disobedience. What was he commissioned to do? Go ahead, uh, Alina. Mm. 
Lina. Uh, he was commissioned to um, give a prophetic word to the people of Nineveh to repent for their sins. Now, I want y'all to get this. So Jonah's disobedience came from moving contrary to God's way was because he was commissioned to, now we're going to be in Christ. You got to understand, as we study this, you're going to find out what Christ was commissioned to and how Jonah was like, a Jonah, not in the disobedience part, but in the point of understanding that what God, what Jesus came to say and to do, because watch this, Jonah was called to go to Nineveh, like, like the woman of God said, and to give a prophetic word to repent because God's desire was he did not want to. And Jonah knew if they repented that God was going to spare Nineveh. So Jonah found, Jonah within himself, well, oh, y'all better hear, we better get this revelation right now. Jonah within himself felt Nineveh was not qualified, that Nineveh was so wicked. Like some people today, I think the world is so wicked. I'm not going into no highways and hedges. I'm not going to preach to nobody. I think the world is so wicked. And I've heard people say stuff like this. You know what? Well, well, everybody going to hell anyway. That's a, that, I mean, everybody, you know, God already got people to. So Jonah, Jonah in his own heart began to say that I don't think they're worthy to be saved. So I don't want to go labor for God in that region because they are a wicked people. They are an evil people. So Jonah basically was telling God, I, I, I don't, God, I don't think, uh, and I know you will save them, but I don't think they are worth being saved. So I am not going. Oh, somebody going to get this revelation. I'm not going to Opelika. I'm not going to Carroll City. I'm not going to that job because I don't perceive a word to be saved because they're not going to pay me enough money if I go to that job. Uh, that what, what are you saying? Your interest in what God is telling you, you're more concerned about your own interest. And I believe Jonah had Jonah didn't perceive that Jonah had his own interest and he was in combat with what God's desire was. Sometimes our own interest can be in combat with God's desire. What do you mean your own interest? Meaning that I perceive that a job has to pay me a big amount of money and I don't believe God going to send me to a job that um, that's going to pay me a little money for some souls. I don't believe those souls need the gospel because I believe I need that money more than them souls need the gospel. So God, don't send me there. Oh God, don't send me to that. I, I'm not going in that neighborhood. That neighborhood look crazy. They are not worthy for what you have poured into me. They're not worthy for the glory and all this process. They're not worthy. Oh God, I'm for, I'm for the nations, God. I don't go to no storefronts, God. I'm for the nations. Send me to the nations. I'm not, so don't be sending me to these little penny any women. Send me to the nations, God, because all you poured in me. And what you're really saying is that where God wants to send you, they're not worthy of the repentance because <clears throat> when Jesus came out of the wilderness, Jesus preached repentance for the kingdom of God. We don't even want to preach repentance no more. But repentance is giving a people a chance to turn away and come and come in. Repentance is giving people to turn away and come in. Go offer them to come in. If you came in, offer them to come in. But the Bible says that the Pharisees of Christ, they didn't want to come in and they didn't want anybody else to come in. Come on, y'all. See, we got some religious people. They don't want to come in and they don't want nobody else to come in. They don't care if nobody else come in. Why? Because they're not coming in either. They got they and you and you may think because they go to a building, you may think they because they are uh, because they wear Jesus things, they wear Jesus shirt and they wear a cross. You may think they in. Well, let me I got some news for you. If you would have been born during the time of Acts. You would have thought Simon Saucer was in. Why? Because Simon the Saucer, when he got, but when Philip was preaching, guess what he did? He got taken in by the word. Not only did he get taken in by the word, the Bible says he was baptized in the water. He got baptized. Go read your Bible. Simon the Saucer got even baptized. But when it came, when it came time for the impartation of the Holy Ghost, Simon the Saucer said, Can I purchase what? Can I use the Holy Spirit to get what I want? <laughs> Can I purchase the Holy Spirit to move in the way I want? And we got people today that has their own agenda in their heart trying to purchase God's Spirit to move God in a way to get what they want. No, I want husbands, so I'm going to prophesy by husband. That ain't in God ain't tell you to do that. The Bible says when a man finds a wife, he finds a good thing. But we don't want the truth because you get offended. We get offended. 
Because why? You interfering with their desires. But Jonah was told to go to Nineveh. Their souls may be saved. But Jonah said that they, he deemed them not worthy to be saved and went in the opposite direction in which God wanted him to go. And I'm going to tell you something. I have to believe. Come on, y'all. Y'all got to get this. See, we think, woman of God, Nina, see, people think this. He got the ticket for the boat. So when you get the ticket, come on, you are you a cool, you a, come on, put 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 my sister, put, put my sister Mike on. Cause I know what she do. So I'm a, I God gonna God gonna use her today. Put my sister Mike on. Put her mic on. Put mama Mike on. Now watch this. Okay. If I come to you, what are what do you do? I'm a travel agent that sells cruise tickets. Okay, so when I come to you and I'm able to purchase the tickets, it's going to proceed. I'm blessed. It's going good. Am I right or wrong? Come on. Yes. Able yes. to purchase the ticket, it's going to appear that God is with me, not going. Because usually you'll think, well, God will shut it down. In other words, if I'm able to get married, if I'm able to do the opposite, it's not, but the Bible says sin is joyful for a season. So What's it? Jonah was able to purchase that he was able to get on the boat. So I would have to believe that Jonah probably thought, well, it can't be that bad. He ain't stopped me from getting on the boat. True. Hmm. But what happened when he got on that boat? The boat even cast out, didn't it? It went out. It, the yeah, the boat left, the boat left when he got on, but then mm -hmm. the storm came. He went downstairs so and went to sleep. There was a, a storm came. The people, the uh, people on the um, boat were so distraught that they began to call on their own gods for help. Come on, they began to call on their own gods, huh? They began to call on their own gods who were not answering. So then mm -hmm. they went. They but they knew it was a god. They just didn't know what was going on there, and that threw me for a loop because. I couldn't figure out why would they know this has something to do with God when it's just a storm, a really bad storm, but they perceived God was behind the storm. So they went and woke him up and said, who are you and where are you from? You know, what do you do? And then he told them that, um, that I, I worship the true and living God that created the, the heavens and the, and the seas. Now check this out. Jonah is on the boat, it, he got the ticket on the boat. He looked like he blessed, he sleep, mm -hmm. he rest. See, some people think, see, this will fool people. This will fool a lot of people because you think you at rest. You think you good in your disobedience. You think you think you okay, but there's gonna come a time where somebody gonna wake you up. You know, and ask you, who are you? Because why? There's something going on, and we're trying to figure out what's going, why this is going on. And Jonah, you know what's funny about God? God's so merciful, it reminds me of Moses. The water still came out the rock. God even used Jonah's disobedience to introduce himself to some people who, who didn't know him. Yep. And they began to worship Jonah's God. Once they threw him off the boat and the seas calm, they began to, the, those, those soldiers that didn't know our God began to worship our God. And what, what I love about God, he's not even bound by your disobedience not to show out. Amen. Amen. He's not even bound by your disobedience. For, what now, now, this is what we got to get. So even in your disobedience, God never lost his purpose. What purpose? To introduce to people to him that he may come to life. Even in your disobedience, he never lost his purpose. But it doesn't change the fact that Jonah was disobedient. So people's life can still be being changed. Yep. And you think you're good. No, you're still disobedient because you're not moving in the direction God told you to. And they threw Jonah off the boat. And guess what? They got peace. Amen. Introduced to why? Because they weren't, they weren't going in the wrong direction. It's a terrible thing for other people to get in peace by what you're preaching. But you're ter you terribly tormented. You're totally going. Why? Because you ain't going in the right direction. So y'all looking at certain people, you be like, man, that's a, no, 
after a while, you know, you, you, you people, yeah, people are getting blessed by that. People, God will still, some people get blessed by that. They get blah, blah, because God let the water come out the rock. But it didn't change the fact that Moses was disobedient. It doesn't change the fact that Jonah was disobedient. Amen. Amen. What I'm trying to show you, what God wants to show us tonight is that even when Jonah's situation, it was still about souls. It was still about people coming to know who he is. And it's not changed today. Amen. 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 A, 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 man. As Joseph said, it's always, that's why I'm, uh, Joseph, I know what you're saying, but it's, it, 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 it's always about souls with God. But somewhere along the line, we came up with another gospel. And in this other gospel, it doesn't really appear that it's about souls. It's about people looking, it's about people seeking after their own desires. God gonna blow me up. God, God, God it's about, it's like, it's about self. But it's always about souls. Anything to go, even when God, it's always about souls. When you, and I think Ashley said it, when you're single, it's about souls. If you're married, it's about souls. If you are mother and children, it's about souls. Let me tell you something. In the day of Noah, it didn't matter what status you were in. The only thing that mattered was, did you know what God was doing? It didn't matter if you were single or married. It didn't matter if you had children or no children. In the day of Noah, the only thing that mattered, did you understand what God was doing? Because you had to be in the ark to be in a place of safety. And that's why God has given us this study that we're going to stop tonight on verse um, chapter two. What verse did we stop at? Um, we stopped at verse 11. We're gonna stop at verse 11. To understand that you are young men and young women, you are called with purpose. And the purpose, uh, the, we say the labor is a few, but we praying. I hope you're on this mic praying. We're on this, let's pray for more laborers. Why? Because he's coming. Jesus Christ is returning. And let me explain something to you. When he returned, the most important thing ever is what you, is what you are in. When Jesus returns, the most important thing is what you are in. Because when that, when that raindrop came from the sky in the day of Noah, the most important thing ever was what you was in. That's why God is called in this study the end. That we may, when we finish, we may understand the significance and importance of what we are in. I don't care about being in in crowd. I don't care nothing about being in no in crowd. Just because the majority of people go in one direction don't mean that's the direction to God. Because the majority of people didn't go with Noah. Matter, matter of fact, Noah was such a small, he was such a small percentage, but he was right. He was doing what, what God wanted. He was in the right thing. People trying to be in the end, people in the church trying to be like the world, in the world, trying to wear swag and trying to be all, it ain't, it ain't, no, you better, you can have some swag, but you better be in. Because he said, I'm going to come like a thief in the night. And if you out, you're going to be like them days of Noah. You're going to be crying and gashing of teeth. But I'm so, is there anybody besides me rejoicing that God will begin to preach a message about being in that we won't be found out? Anybody that before anybody saying, God, I'm so glad that you love me so much that you will allow me to tune in to a message that's talking about what we need to be in. So because when you come, I don't want to be left out. It's a song to say, Lord, whatever you're doing in this season, whatever you're doing in this season, don't do it without me. Let me tell you something. That song got a prop that meaning behind it. Why? Because if he do it without you, you're going to be in trouble. Because what God is doing in this season is what he's been doing before, he, before for the beginning of time when he said that um, you're going to bruise this head, he's going to bruise this head. God is creating 
his ark. He showed us in the day of Noah and Lot, he gonna pull people out of the world and he gonna pull them into the ark. He said, when the son of man come, it shall be as in the day of Noah and Lot. What was in the day of Noah? He was building. What was in the day of Lot? He was pulling out. From what? What was to come? So God is building the body. Mm. How do we know the body? Verse uh, chapter one, verse 22, and had put all things under his feet and gave him to all the head over all things to the church, which is his body. He is, we are the body. He is the head. He is, the body is the ark today. God, those in Christ. He's gathering everyone in Christ. He's gathering everyone in Christ who is the head and everybody he's gathering in the head is the body. We're going to see it laid out even more as we keep going. Are there any questions tonight? I, was, I pray that you were blessed as I was blessed. Are there any questions? Did we learn? If we learned something, let's put a thumbs up. Did we learn something tonight? And some may be understanding. Paul Barber said something so prophetic. He said something so powerful. Paul Barber said, you got to know because I, I'm trying to say like he said it. If you connect yourself to the wrong thing, then that thing that you connected yourself is trying to keep you out. It's not, it's, God is talking about relationship, but he's trying to show you something. He's trying to show it's important. See, people talking about this marriage thing and this thing seem to be, this thing seem to be like taking off and everybody like, no, God said, what you connect yourself can lead you out. Because remember he said, wives, submit yourself to your husband. If you submit to yourself to somebody who don't desire to go in, then they're going to lead you out. So it's important that you connect to someone who is in. Hmm. So and, and, and to connect to someone who is in, you can't let your flesh lead. You can't let your flesh lead. You got to let the spirit, the Holy Spirit lead. Be sealed by the Holy Spirit. God is good. Oops, I'm tearing stuff up in my heart. Oops. Love y'all.